Hi, um, can you guys hear me and see me and everything? Okay, so I'm just gonna get started. And so basically, I'm going to be presenting about all the things that I've created and learned from um, over the span of making and how I got started into making and what I've been doing in this time that uh, we have been having lately. So I started making when I was about six years old and I just went to a maker fair and this was the Buffalo Mini Maker Fair. And there were so many different things all over the place. There were arts and crafts, there were people dancing and music. And there was one thing that caught my eye the most, which was robotics. And that's kind of where my journey making started. We all make and we all create in our mind. At school, you know, you draw pictures and you write stories and that's making. And I decided to start with robotics. And I saw this robot, it was an art bot. And this art bot was made out of a plastic cup, three markers and a motor and a wine cork. And it was just so interesting because no one was telling it what to do. It was just going around, scribbling around a piece of paper. And I was just, I just wanted to learn how to make that. And of course I was young, so I just thought it was magic of some kind, but we went home and I told my dad, I was like, I wanna learn how to do this. So he got me kits and all those different things and I learned how to make one. And for my second grade project where we had to make something out of recyclable materials, I made this art bot and it was made out of a blueberry container, four old markers and an old toothbrush motor of all things. And that's where my journey started. I then went to present at different maker fairs and all these different places that I really enjoyed and I got to learn from other people. I got to learn how to present and how to share my ideas and my thoughts. And I got to um, share my ideas and teach other people about what I've learned. And I've learned so much over um, these past few months where we've kind of been stuck inside. And for a while, I was just kind of sitting around and not really doing anything with my time, just kind of, you know, ignoring it. And then I just, one day I was like, no, I need to learn something. I need to make something of this time. And so I was just scrolling through YouTube and seeing what it was recommending me. And I stumbled upon embroidery. I had heard of embroidery a little bit, but it wasn't really something that I had, that I had ever done before. And I didn't really have any, anyone in my family that, that had done embroidery. And um, so I watched a bunch of different videos. And that's what I found really helpful when I was learning other and learning how to do these different skills that I've now gotten uh, quite a few um, is that it was very helpful to find different perspectives. I was going to share some of my favorite creators um, and just kind of put those out there. But then I remembered that with my making experience, it was really important for me to watch a bunch of different people and find what I liked and um, what was helpful to me because everyone learns differently. Some people learn by watching, some people learn by listening, and um, it just kind of varies from person to person. So um, I'm going to kind of go into how I made my different um, in things and how I discovered how to use the internet as a resource of and to learn from. So I talked about embroidery a little bit and I started embroidery a few months ago, I'd like to say, and I watched um, that one video and I thought it was so interesting. So I convinced my parents to buy me embroidery and they did and we just got some small, embroidery packages. And these had the instructions on how to do certain stitches on the back. Some people learn like that. Some people can read the instructions and put it down and it works perfectly fine. But for me, it wasn't as easy to do just from the written instructions. So I went through and I looked up the specific stitches and then I discovered that they all had different names. Each person called it a different thing. And um, 
each person did it a little differently. Some people used their left hand and wrapped the thread around their right hand. And I had to figure out how I wanted to do that. So I've made a few of these. I'm going to show these real quick. These are some of the embroideries that I've made. This is the one of the first ones. Here's another one. <coughs> and those, while they are small, they did take um, quite some time to figure out because I had to go back and undo things and I would get the thread tied up in knots and having to just start the entire thing over again because I messed up. And that's part of the making process and that's part of the learning process is messing up and starting over and trying again and again and again. And sometimes it can become frustrating when you're starting over and trying again, but it's just, if you need to take a step back, that's something that you can do. And that's something that I found really helpful was jumping kind of, if I got annoyed with embroidery for a minute because I couldn't figure out how to do a specific pattern or a specific stitch, I could go to something else. Here's another embroidery that I had done. This is a pillowcase and um, this was something that my parents found and they thought that it would be nice for me to do it. So uh, this took a while. Um, several hours went into this pillowcase and these, all of these came with designs on them. And that was another thing. I looked up a bunch of different videos on how to design your own embroidery patterns because that was something I wasn't sure how to do. Um, did you just draw lines? Did you draw it on a piece of paper and then just do it on the fabric? I just didn't understand how I was supposed to go about that. And I wanted to design something for myself, something that was kind of personal and that I could show off. And that's um, when I figured out that you can draw on the fabric and I embroidered my shoe. <laughs> so um, this one was a uh, fun, but also slightly painful one to do because it does go through some uh, leather bits and that was very hard to get the needle through. Um, but I just embroidered a rose on it and uh, it was there, <laughs> so you can see it a bit better. And that one was something I designed myself, but I also pulled um, all the different things that I'd learned, all the different stitches and the different ways to do the stitches and figure out what was the easiest for this shoe. Because with each type of fabric, it, sometimes it's gonna be easier to go through than some type of fabric and sometimes it's gonna be hard. So you just kind of have to alternate and learn from your past processes processes um, to do that. Um, another thing that I had done, oh no, I'm sorry. Um, another thing that had, I had done um, was a few years ago, I was at a Maker Faire and they had a um, in-person learning environment where you could go in and they would just teach you how to do different things. They taught you how to cross stitch and lap chuck. And lap chucking was something that I found very interesting, very fun. And it was a nice uh, way to kind of take up time. And that's another thing that uh, I like to do a lot was go out to like our local library and go to different um, making events that they had there and learn from people who had been doing it for a while and learn from the people who had just gotten there and just started. And so um, I was able to find a latch hook kit with the yarn that came pre-cut. And I found it exceedingly hard now to find um, pre-cut yarn. And that was another thing that I had to look up. I looked up how to make a cardboard thing to cut your yarn the same size out of cardboard. And um, because I wanted to figure out how to do that, I've looked up videos on how to uh, make your own latch hook pattern. These are things that I haven't done yet, but I really hope to do in the future. Here is the latch hook that I made. It's not super big, it's just a little whale, um, but I worked on this a while last year and then I kind of stopped for a bit and then I got started again and I'm really happy I did because it turned out a lot better than I thought it would because it was my first latch hook that I've done and I've gotten a pillow and I've had to look up videos on 
how to finish them off. And you just hear me keep saying this, I had to look it up, I had to look it up. And that's a great resource that most of us have access to is YouTube and the internet. And you can look up blogs if you learn best from writing and pictures, and you can look up videos if that's what you learn best from. But what is extremely important to keep in mind, and that was really helpful for me, is that you don't wanna just go with one source. You wanna find a bunch of different creators and a bunch of different blogs and posts to use because then you can get a bunch of different perspectives. And that's something that's really easy to kind of forget. I know sometimes I would get lazy and not want to look up more than one thing at a time, but it was really helpful when I was trying to learn something and I would just not understand what this one person was saying and the wording that they used and I would look it up somewhere else and find what was helpful for me. So um, I'm sure we're all aware of uh, our the situation that we're in and why our fair is virtual this year. And in light of that, um, I was able to um, figure out how to make masks from, again, a YouTube video. YouTube has kind of my, been my best friend lately. Um, always helping me learn and I uh, better my skills. And the first one, I didn't have a sewing machine to use for, and I made it by hand. Um, this is the mask that I made. It's just out of fabric and thread, and it took me about five hours. Um, it was very hard because there's three layers of fabric um, at each part, and it was really hard to get them together, but I, did it anyway, and was able to make my first mask. Um, and then I, you know, looked at how does this person make it this fast? Because they said this should take 15 minutes. And I thought to myself, well, it took me a long time, more than 15 minutes. And they had a sewing machine because I didn't watch the video all the way through. And that was something that I took forward with me was watching everything all, all the way through because it's very easy to just say, oh, I understand and not finish it. But um, sometimes they might add in an important part, um, a little trick or a hack in the different parts of the video. This was the one that I made with the sewing machine and it looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner lines, and it was a lot faster. It took me, probably the first time I made this, it took me about an hour because I did have to go back with the sewing machine and um, fix a bunch of things when I accidentally went off or I went backwards or the um, thread would get stuck. I, the thread got stuck one time and I had to call my grandma and my mom and everyone that just kind of was trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong with it. And I looked in the pamphlet, I looked up it on YouTube um, and was able to figure it out and was able to fix it myself. And that was um, a nice thing to do. So with um, the internet and everything, um, my mom wanted something to do with her time rather than um, just kind of sitting around, which was what I was doing. And she wanted to do a um, 3D, or not 3D, it was just a paint by number kit that she wanted to get. And it never arrived. So she um, ordered a different one. And instead of an art painting kit, um, she received uh, one of these. This is a 3D little plastic bead um, art kind of mural type thing. Um, and she had bought it for herself, yes. However, um, I found it very interesting and um, I kind of took it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to anyone here. Um, I worked on it and um, then she wanted to actually do it. So she bought me my own and this was the one that I chose. And um, it has a, two dogs and a cat and a rabbit and a guinea pig and a ferret. This was one thing that I didn't look up because the instructions that came with it, I understood. And that's okay. Sometimes you don't need to look something up. Sometimes you understand, or sometimes you have someone in your family who has done it before, and that's perfectly fine because um, they can help you and you can learn from them. So this one, well, it doesn't, it's not super clear. The bigger ones that you um, have, the 
better they look because it can have more details. And the smaller ones that you get, they are going to be very simple and um, pretty straightforward ones. And this is something that was really fun and it did take um, quite some time. Um, and some dedication went into it, but when I completed it, I felt very proud of myself because it did take so much time. And that's another thing, when you're making something and you get frustrated, just think of how amazing it's gonna be when you actually finish it. Just the feeling of accomplishing something and learning a new skill in the process. So, um, kind of towards the end of summer, um, when I was getting back into the dance season, um, I'm a dancer, that's another form of making. Um, I stumbled upon, I was getting some shoes and I found um, one of my, one of the favorite stores that I like in my area and they were giving um, away um, just, they're not real point shoes, but they look like a point shoe, um, kind of feel like a point shoe, don't wear them for dance um, to for you to design. And this is one I kind of, gave up on it a little bit um, just because it didn't really turn out how I wanted, but I've been working on uh, coming up with some designs to embroider on the sides. So uh, while they did come with markers for you to use, and that's what they expect you to use was the markers and the beads that it came with, um, you can pull in your other skills. With anything, you can pull in something else. You know, you make a robot, you can sew some clothes for it if you know how to sew. And you can pull in all these different skills to then combine into one big, amazing project. So this was supposed to look like a tutu on it. Um, the markers bled, which I wasn't expecting. And it just kind of didn't really go as planned, but that's okay because I learned from it and I kind of compensated the rest of the time expecting the markers to bleed. And um, that was a very um, nice thing to know. Um, another thing that I've been uh, doing is I recently moved to school. In school, they have a club called Thirst Project. And my sister is in Thirst Project as well. And so she is working on organizing a run for it. And for this run, we wanted to come up with a fun idea to raise money. And um, we came up with these bracelets. Thirst Project, what it does is um, it gives the money that they get from these donations, it goes to um, places where they can't get water or they have to walk a long time to get water. And so we made these bracelets. And this was something I looked up on YouTube. We're going back to the YouTube theme. Um, and I watched, I can't tell you how many videos I watched on uh, this, which is called Looming. Um, I probably watched at least 15 before I even found this one design that I wanted. And I found this one design from one person and I tried to find it somewhere else and I just couldn't. So I had to kind of go with their explanation of it, um, which was a bit tricky at first. It took me, about three tries, I'd like to say, to get this bracelet. But then once I did, it turned out really nice. It looks really good. The patterns are so nice. And it's the color of Thirst Project, which is blue and black. And it looks very sleek. And I'm very happy with how it turned out. And that's something that I've been working on for the school club and Thirst Project as just kind of um, a way to use making for other people. Into the um, my one of my main things that I've been working on and learning with is yarn. Um, I had been cleaning out my closet and going through old things that I had had in there that I kind of hadn't used, and I stumbled upon a crochet kit. And this crochet kit comes with a booklet trying to explain how to do the different things. Um, it isn't labeled for beginners, and I should have taken that as a hint to not do it when I had just learned how to crochet after swearing the first time I tried it that I would never try it again because I just couldn't get it. I had opened this kit before and tried to learn from it, and I didn't. And um, coming back, cleaning out my closet, like at least a year later, I found it again and decided, okay, we're going to learn this. So this um, had a crochet hook in it. And I used that and some old yarn that I had had um, in our closet and I had watched a video. And I 
I had just had random shapes that had come out. They were trying to show you how to crochet a line and my line turned into a circle because it just didn't, it wasn't right. And that's okay. Um, because the first time you do anything, it's not going to be perfect. Um, this was one of the first things that is crocheted and that actually looks okay. This was one of the first things that I made and it's now a coaster that my family uses. Um, if you ask anyone in my family, once I learned how to crochet, I kind of only crocheted um, squares and circles for coasters. And we had an abundance of coasters just laying around. Um, and if you ask anyone in my household, they will tell you that I made too many coasters. Um, but a nice thing with this was I got to also use that and learn different um, patterns. Here's a pattern that I learned. Um, and this one just has the holes in it and it looks um, nice but not super nice because it was the first one that I did. And that's okay, I wasn't expecting it to be amazing and um, look fantastic. And um, that was something that I worked on and I'll get back into that specific design um, in a little bit. I just wanna show you one other design that I learned which was um, crocheting in round. Uh, this uses a technique called the magic circle. Um, it was kind of a big name and um, I was a bit nervous to try it out and um, it, it, I failed several times and that was something that was consistent with all these different projects that I had been making is that I messed up a lot and that's perfectly fine um, and I, I'm not going to lie to you here, I got really frustrated and I kind of put crochet away for a little bit. Um, a few days I just couldn't um, and then I came back to it and I got this and I'm really glad that I came back to it because this turned out really beautifully and my family uses that as coasters. Sometimes at night when the cat um, is in the mood to play, she plays with the coasters that are just laying on the table and likes to knock them off. And um, that is something that was really nice. And so um, this is how I stored all my yarn. My I found a blanket design um, that I wanted to try out and it started off, I just wanted to make something that was more than a coaster or a pot holder. And I just kind of crocheted a line of blue and watched one small short clip of someone showing you how to connect them. In this video specifically though, they were gonna show you five of simple ways to connect crocheted squares. I watched the first one because it was the simplest and decided I knew what I was doing. Um, and so I crocheted them the first way, which was to just um, stitching them together with some yarn and it wasn't flowy, it was very stiff and it wasn't what I was looking for. And so the only colors of yarn that I had had were blue and red. And I asked my family, what do you guys think about a blue and red blanket? And they just all looked at me like, I don't really think so. I don't know if that's what we wanna do. So I found a blanket design um, that I really liked. And the idea behind this blanket was emotions. And I will show you guys that one at the end. It's um, the biggest project that I've been working on. And it's one that I'm really proud of so far. So um, this is how I store my yarn. It's in a pretzel container. I was going to design it with some nice design with markers, but um, I thought it was funny that it was a pretzel container and it had yarn in it. Um, so yeah. Um, um, I'm gonna get all the stuff over here. So I mentioned the product and that was using making a way to help people. And my mom shared a link with me, which was for our hospital. And they were looking for people to crochet um, these little octopi for preemie babies in the hospital. And um, this is what they are. This is the one that I'm working on currently. Um, and it's, um, I've made about three and I started off, I just made one or two out of not the right material, um, they weren't, the proper height or length or anything like that. They didn't pass any code. And so those ones I obviously couldn't give away to the hospital, but I thought it's okay because I had practice and I didn't need to, you know, 
waste time, I guess, um, on using the good material. And so I got the right material, 100% cotton. Um, here's just part of one that I've been working on. And I made, um, I'd like to say about three of with this kind that I've already given away to the hospital. Um, and they were really fun to make. I would just kind of sit down with a movie and a nice something nice to drink and a snack and just kind of um, crochet. Now, the pattern that I looked up, I joined a Facebook group, which is something that I haven't mentioned um, so far, but is using, if you have social media, um, like Facebook or Instagram, you can go and follow people that make and kind of see their projects and get inspiration from their projects. And also, um, depending on the type of channel that they have, you can sometimes they'll show you how to make something or you can ask them how to show you how to make something. And I found a Facebook group for the Octopi and um, they had all the requirements for them on that Facebook group, which was really helpful because I didn't know where else to find those. Um, and so then they had on their Facebook page, they had all those instructions and um, then I went and they didn't have a design on there. They just had the um, rules that you had to follow. So I found a person um, who posted a blog of them. And in this blog, they had a video, of course, which was really helpful because um, when I first started making them, I just tried to read the instructions and I came up with just random circles that didn't even resemble the shape of an octopus on, and that didn't go down like they were supposed to. And um, so I watched this video finally and was able to figure it out, um, kind of. Um, the first one I made, it wasn't the best, but it wasn't terrible either, which was good. And then uh, when I was figuring out how to make the tentacles, the sizes weren't right. So I would make an entire tentacle, measure it, and it wasn't right. And I would have to go back and undo the entire thing and right there in that tentacle was probably about 30 minutes of work. And um, it was uh, very frustrating to say the least when um, something like that would happen uh, because it was something that I'd worked on for a while and um, was very annoyed with. So um, the shoe was kind of a way of showing and expressing um, kind of what I'd learned. And this is another way, this is a sweater that I'm making currently. It still needs sleeves and the lower half of the torso, um, but it is going pretty good. It's nice and fluffy and stretchy. And I didn't have, um, I kind of used some old yarn that I'd had and it was really thick and bulky and it kind of created a stiffness to it. And I couldn't get it over my head um, with, and it was just very, it was all over the place. Um, and I kind of went back and undid the first round and extended it by five. It was still very stiff and uncomfortable. I had made it all the way down, um, probably about two rounds before you had to make the sleeves and I put it on and I was like, this is not working. It's not, it's not comfortable. It's not what I wanted. And it's very hard to get over my head. So I went back and I um, did some research on good types of yarn um, to use for making clothing. And people have different preferences, of course, because again, making is supposed to be personalized to you. You can personalize your form of making, whether it's um, through a different type of material or just a different um, way of doing something. It's personalized how you like to do it. And um, so, Putting that like personal opinions aside, I kind of found what was um, more comfortable, what was kind of found more comfortable to most people. And so I found a nice yarn and I was able to make this sweater so far out of that. Um, I have my dad handing me things off screen. So this is quite large, um, but this is something that my dad wanted to make for um, his uh, work kind of, he was doing a uh, presentation on cardboard creations and um, found this. We have two cats 
um, that, uh, and we were kind of getting bored. This is, um, so we made a little cat house. This was the first one that we made and it turned out really nice. Um, all these little decorations were my doing, the shingles and the parts which are on both sides, there's a cutout part here. Um, this one turns out pretty nice and it's still standing, which is really helpful. Um, here is the second one that I made. Um, I was watching a movie, of course, which is something um, that I like to do while I'm making with uh, different things. If I already watched videos on it, I'll probably turn on a movie and um, kind of just have that as background noise. This is the second one we made. Um, as you can see, it has collapsed. I put um, construction supports on the inside to try and um, not have it collapse because I wanted to put a balcony on it um, for our cat and I made the hole smaller so that way our smallest cat could get inside and the biggest one couldn't because they were fighting over the houses and it collapsed and our cat still comes up and sits on the collapsed roof and hangs out up there and bothers um, my dad while he's working and she'll come up and while I'm in the middle of a Zoom class, she'll come up and bother me and say hi to the camera. And that's just what cats do. They um, mess things up. So um, another thing that we had been doing a lot um, was making different types of food. And this was something that I kind of found nice um, because it was delicious. So you got to eat your creation when you were done with it. Um, I'm going to present my screen really quick. This is just a quick three slides with some pictures that I have. Um, okay, so I hope you guys can see this. Um, so here um, is uh, some of the things that we made. As you can see, there's bread, and um, my dad was mostly in charge of making bread. He even did a work call on his bread making skills. Um, and he was usually the one that was making the bread and sometimes he would show me the recipe and um, kind of tell me what seeds he added. And um, when me and my dad, we cook together a lot. And uh, when we make something for the first time, we follow the instructions almost down to a T. And then once you kind of get it, you can determine, well, maybe I want to add some Italian seasoning or some garlic or just anything that you want, you can customize. But we always like to do it one time to the instructions to figure out what they intended. And then we can change it for ourselves and personalize it like making these meant to be. So here you can see our calzones that we made and the bread that he made. Now, um, on the topic of bread, this uh, next thing here, this first pizza um, that you can see, that was bread gone wrong. <laughs> it was not meant to be a pizza. Um, we were just uh, I understand that. <laughs> we were just making bread, and um, so then uh, it didn't rise and it didn't go well and it was just kind of goopy. So uh, we looked in the fridge and we were like, what can we do with this? You know, you don't want to waste it. Um, it's good food that would, um, could hopefully be used for something. So we flattened it out and made it into a thick crust pizza, pizza, my bad, a thick crust pizza. And um, it actually tasted pretty good for bread turned into pizza, um, better than expected. So the second picture that you have here is when we actually, um, you know, we realized we hadn't had pizza in a while. So let's actually figure out how to make it. We found a recipe. We found a recipe um, on there. And that's what we learned. I we made white pizza, we made normal pizza, meat lovers pizza, anything you can imagine. And something I kind of did on my own time was um, baking uh, goods like this, nice cupcakes, truffles. These were non-cooked truffles, which were really nice, made out of Oreos and super easy. It was just 36 Oreos crushed up and eight ounces of um, cream cheese all mixed together with chocolate. And it was delicious. Um, pumpkin pie, these cupcakes took so long and I learned how to make caramel. That was a nice thing that I learned how to do. Um, so I'm just gonna stop sharing here. Um, so finally on to one of the last things, which is something I'm still working on and will hopefully be working on for the duration of the year until July 1 of next year. I started 
making this blanket again, like I mentioned, uh, using social media, I found someone on Instagram who crocheted and I was like, Hey, I crochet too. I just learned how to crochet. Um, might be nice to see someone who's a bit more experienced. This person had a YouTube channel and they had all their resources and, um, they were making an emotion blanket. So this is what this is. It looks a bit chaotic because there are so many different colors. Um, but, uh, life is a bit chaotic and you feel different ways all the time. Um, so here is it so far. Um, something that kind of has a bit of a hindrance to being in school. Um, now, <laughs> going to school is very important, but it has gotten in the way a little bit because, you know, I have to do assignments and turn everything in and I haven't been able to crochet as much as I'd like to and I've kind of gotten behind. Um, but that's okay because I've been using my weekends um, a bit better and using those as kind of a way to um, catch up. I've been making probably about three each day on the weekends. Here are some that still haven't been connected yet. And these are the square pattern that I showed you before. And as you saw with the first square, it was very big and it wasn't um, tight crochets. And then this, it's very tight, um, very nice. They're very soft when they go in here. And like I mentioned before, I had only watched that video about a minute into the one person telling me one way on how to connect squares. And I watched it all the way through and found a bunch of different videos of people doing different ways of connecting and found this way of connecting, which is what this white yarn is. And that's the connections that I use. And it makes this blanket really nice and really cozy. And I'm really looking forward to when it's done. Another thing that's nice about this is while you're making, um, each color represents an emotion. You can think about why you felt that way. And um, another thing about it is you can make, you know, you can make blue be happy and you can make green be sad if that's what you choose to do. Um, and you don't have to share those with anyone and it can just be kind of a way to kind of put how you're feeling out there, but in a safer way, if that makes sense. And it was really nice because it gave you some, it gave me some reflecting time and just kind of time to kind of put everything else aside, you know, no matter what was going on. Um, I could just kind of have time to myself and time to think about what happened. And I also got a nice kit um, that was very helpful. It came with a bunch of different sizes of hooks, which was helpful for the octopi and the blanket and everything that I've learned so far. And um, basically what I hope that you took out of this presentation, um, there'll be, um, you guys can ask questions um, if you have any, um, but really what I hope that you got out of this is um, that it's okay to mess up and it's really important to use your resources. Um, use your family, use the internet, use YouTube, um, use anything that you have access to as a way to learn and um, even if you don't have access to materials, you can still watch the videos and kind of understand it in your head. Um, that's how I learned how to play ukulele of all things. I learned it from YouTube videos and from different people and um, finding songs that I liked and looking up these chords. And then if I didn't understand what that chord was, I would find a video and find the finger positions for it. And that was nice because I get to make music now. And um, so I learned how to play ukulele of all things uh, from YouTube and I got a I'm getting um, got a ukulele for my birthday and it was an early birthday present, but um, that was really nice. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions, um, I hope that you ask, um, I can answer them. We have about five more minutes, I think. So um, yeah. Um, so if you don't have any questions, I don't see any popping up, which is totally fine. Um, I'm going to just talk a little bit more about um, kind of how I transitioned from robots into the crafts. Um, because like I mentioned, I started robotics when I was really young. I started when I was six. So of course, as you grow up, you um, change, your interests change. And that was something that um, I found is I still love going around and I love presenting my robots and I love talking about them and talking about the process and how I learned and how I learned how to present. Um, but it was something, it was kind of important to me to not just be in this one spot for a long time. Um, but something that's 
kind of helpful is to understand that it's okay to move on from something and it's okay to grow. And um, so I kind of put robotics down for a few months and I wasn't really making anything for the first few months of quarantine. I was just kind of sitting around doing my schoolwork and um, watching TV. And that was kind of the extent of what I had been doing. And I decided I wanted to learn and I decided I wanted to um, kind of figure out how to do new skills. And I wanted to kind of shift away from the robotics just a little bit and figure out what I also, what else I like to do. And um, I found crochet and embroidery and uh, diamond plastic bead art and needle felting. And uh, needle felting I like to do when I was in class and the teachers were having discussions. I would just sit there with my needle felting and make a cat. And um, that was uh, something that was just kind of helpful. Um, help me kind of stay focused a little bit. And um, yeah, it was a really nice experience to learn these different things. I wish it could have been under better circumstances, but um, hopefully I can one day go out and go to um, a class on how to make crochet and how to make different things and learn that way. So yeah. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this presentation. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you're kind of wanting to do something, get into something, I hope that these kind of give you ideas and uh, helped you learn how to use your resources a little bit better. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, and I'm, I'm just gonna head out now. Okay, bye.